Hey guys, uh, welcome to this week's review of Ready to Love. I know I only did like one other review for this season, <laughs> but I don't know. I do watch it, but I don't review it. The reason why, I don't know. I find it, although I find it interesting, whew, sorry about that. Although I find it interesting to watch, there's just so many moving parts that the like, to do a review of Ready to Love is kind of difficult. <laughs> like, I'm just going to be real. It's hard because there's so many characters, right? And they have multiple love connections going on. And it's like, for what I'm doing right now, it like it's kind of hard to make a review that is a decent size. Like, some of my house, um, Housewives review are, like, longer than the damn show. And I'm like, what? How is my review longer than the show like that's unacceptable <laughs> right is it just me i don't think your review should be longer than the actual actual show but then you just you know you keep talking and you're rambling you're going here and you're going there and by the time you know it like what i'm doing right now i i see that it's, i've only been talking for a minute so i'm making good time <laughs> right but yeah, you there's just so much. So if I were to review Ready to Love, which I'm about to do right now, I like, I don't know. I'm afraid, right? I may go on forever. So, and then I just get exhausted. And to be honest with you, I am not a relationship expert. I am not, I repeat, I am not a relationship expert. You know what I mean? So, you know, to kind of speak, you know who's really good at it if you watch the show? If you watch the show, you probably know who they are. But I suggest subscribing to Little Black Book 91. Like, he really breaks things down. And more so, what I enjoy is the live panel. So I cannot wait, you know, for the live panel. Let's get into the damn review for part two, okay, <laughs> of this reunion. So the episode starts off where it le left off, <laughs> right? And like, what's her name? Tunisia, Tunisia. I'm sorry, I don't remember her name. I, I have an idea of what her name is, but Tasia. I think it's Tasia. She's upset because I didn't know this. We didn't know this at the time, but her mother is in the hospital. So... I guess she, you know, yeah, she's probably upset about that. You know what I mean? And it's like, you don't, you know, you're stressed out about your mom. You're going through that. Plus, we're in a pandemic and everything. And you have to, like, I don't know. Like, some people may be like, yeah, I want to get all glammed up. I want to get my hair done. I want to put on a pretty dress. But you know when you're just not in that spirit, right? Right? But it's like you're contractually obligated to. So you have to go, fine, I have to go do my makeup. I have to go do my hair. I have to go put on this uncomfortable dress, but I have to look cute. <laughs> right? Okay, I have to go and sit up on the stage and pretend to care about these people and their stupid petty drama when half of them are faking it anyways. You know what I mean? Like, I get that. <laughs> right? Now, if you're in a good spirit, it could be very, like, fun. Like, yay, I get to get dressed up, get to do my hair and my makeup. I get to wear this beautiful dress. Yes, it's a little uncomfortable, but I feel cute. <laughs> right? You know, yay, I'm sitting on the stage. Woohoo! <laughs> right? Oh, my gosh, they're so petty. Half of them are fake. But <laughs> it's so entertaining, right? Like, and... And it seems like they build real friendships with each other. So it could be a fun moment. You know what I mean? But if your mom's in the hospital and you're worried about her and you're seeing people just argue over nonsense, I can totally understand why you would be triggered. Like, this is stupid. Why am I here? And she probably feels guilty. Who knows, right? Like, she feels like, oh, I should be by my mom. I shouldn't be doing... 
I shouldn't be doing this, right? And she's allowed to feel that in the moment. So I hope her mom, you know, is doing fine and everything. And she's doing fine herself. Okay, <laughs> moving on. So what was the part? Oh, yeah, Naeem and Zadia. Like, Naeem made it very, 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 very clear. Me and Zadia are together now. Me and Zadia are a thing. And it's like, calm down. <laughs> you know, and, and like Zadia, now that I heard some stories about her, Zadia's smile is very, ugh. you know what I mean? It's like, she's smiling through it and she's like, yeah. Yeah, we're exclusive. That's why he's standing up for me. And she's like, has this weird grin on her face the entire time. And I'm not going to lie. They make a cute couple. So if it's real, it's real. But I'm really curious to know what her deal is. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It's like, I understand one person having a misunderstanding with you or misinterpreting your behavior because we all have different personalities, right? You know, so I'm willing to give someone a bit of grace and the benefit of the doubt, right? Especially when I didn't see anything too, too crazy. Like, this may be an unpopular opinion, right? But when Aisha and Zadia got into it because Zadia was trying to stand up for um, Camille, right? And uh, Cornelius. <sighs> Let me just take a sip of water. Woo. Woo. <laughs> Intermission. Okay. <laughs> Back to it. Right, when Camille was trying to stand up for, um, no, when Zadia was trying to stand up for Camille and Cornelius, because, you know, obviously Camille was saying, I'll F you up, and she was being real aggressive about it, right? And then, of course, Aisha has to be the one to, <laughs> to like, call her out, and da-da-da-da-da, and they get into it. I didn't really find too much problem when Zadi was like, look, they made a connection. Like, what is the problem? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, even if you don't like it, even if you think they're fake and they're not genuine or whatever your issue, even if you feel like they didn't go through the process how you think they should have went through the process, they've made a connection and they've decided that they're going to be a thing. It is what it is. It could be genuine and they're like, yo, let's play things up and let's make the most of it. I don't know, right? But if that's what they do, that's what they do. Why are you arguing with them about that? You know what I mean? Like, why are you trying to convince them to do different? And then I don't know, I don't know why they would be voted off the show, right? If anything, okay, so they're not talking to anybody else. That's fine. I would have loved... Okay, as a viewer, I would have loved to get more scenes with Cornelius and Camille, right? Because then we can sort of really see how the relationship um, progresses. Just because you quote-unquote find love, or oh, I guess the show is called Ready to Love, not Find Love, clearly not. <laughs> that would be a very inaccurate title, right? But like, just because people link up, doesn't mean that their story is over. Like, the story still plays out. Like, after you decide, yeah, I'm going to date you, I guess. It's a show as more so, are you ready to date? Once you've decide, I'm ready to date this person, there's still more to the story, right? It's not like, I'm ready to date you, and then the next day they're married with kids. That's not how it, that's not how it works. So I don't understand why the producer's... I don't know, don't want to see that play out, right? They kind of make it into a competition show, which was cute the first episode, okay? Very, it was it was a very interesting concept the first season. Sorry, not the first episode, the first season, right? The second season is like, okay, this is juicy. The third season is like, mm-hmm, yeah, this is cute, but, you know, I'm starting to see issues here. 
And then, what, we're, is this the fifth season or the fourth season? But I know they have one coming up very soon. I think it's in Miami, which will be very interesting, <laughs> to say the least, right? So, I think people are, and especially me, myself, right? You're starting to see things that kind of need to be changed in the show. And, like... One thing I think a lot of people have a problem with is this whole elimination and it's kind of turning into a competition show, right? I guess it was from the start, but I don't think that's what we want to see anymore. Like, I don't know. The first seasons did come off a little bit more authentic and genuine. And maybe because the people on the show, they never seen a show like this before, right? So they were like just experience th- experiencing things truly for the first time. But now that we're on, what, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh season, like, obviously people coming onto the show watch the show, right? Like, duh, <laughs> right? So you kind of know the game by a certain point. You know how to finesse things. You know how to move, right? Even if you're not, like, consciously trying to do that, like, to be honest, watching the show enough, if, if like, in some ultimate alternate reality, I would end up on this show for some strange-ass reason, you know, there's, I probably would move in a certain way myself, I'm not gonna lie, right? You are gonna be a little bit more strategic because, you know, that's how the show works. So, change how the show works you know what I mean I think it's like we want to blame the people on the show and maybe they deserve some of the blame but I feel like a lot of the issue is the structure of the show it like brings this out on people it makes people want to be competitive you know it makes people maybe want to be like build alliances and da 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 right like because you it's like one of the things that they didn't like Zadia for and Camille for, right? That I like I got from the interviews. Um, I think especially from Sabrina. <laughs> Sabrina doesn't like them, just so you know, right? <sighs> Another sip of water. Sabrina doesn't like Zadia, okay? She doesn't. And one of the stories you get from them is that they were trying to get, like, talk to everybody to see who they're voting for. Like, who are you going to put in the bottom? Put this guy in the bottom and put that person in the bottom so that girl can go home, right? And that's really messy, right? And they're not right for that. They have responsibility in, in that. But, like, I don't know. I can't really get too mad at them when that's the way the show is structured. So if that's the way the show is structured, can you blame someone for playing by the rules of the game they're playing by the rules of the game like the producers of the show purposely set things up so it can be messy like this because they're trying to make the show interesting right and I'm not saying you can't have these these messy elements I enjoy a little bit of messy elements but something needs to change with that so we're not like I don't know. So things just are a little bit more genuine. That's all. Right? So, (laughs) wow. I didn't even think I started the review yet. Did I? Did I? But I kind of touched on that. So moving on from them, you know, it is what it is. Whatever. Who really cares? (laughs) After I went on for how long? Um, Da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da-da. Courtney and Cornelius. Courtney and Cornelius were just not compatible at all. At all. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't understand why Courtney was so drawn and pulled in by Cornelius. I, I, I don't... I think with Courtney, it was just the way she was touching on his legs, and it was really, she was all about the looks, right? It was just purely physical. She saw Cornelius and thought, wow, this is an attractive guy. You know, I want him. And that was it. 
She didn't think about his personality. She didn't really think about the fact that he wanted to wait till marriage. She was, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, 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 whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's not going to happen. <laughs> so if you're a very sexual person, right? And someone says to you, I want to wait till marriage. Like, what are, like, and you don't. Don't waste your time over there. Why are you, you know what I mean? So, and same with Cornelius. I didn't get Cornelius because I thought like, okay, is he one of those guys that says, oh yeah, I want to wait till marriage. I don't drink alcohol. I don't cheat. Like, is one of those guys that kind of say that, right? That's like the front that they have. But then behind the scenes, they're doing all sorts of crazy crap, right? That's what I kind of was like, is Cornelius that guy, got, um, is Cornelius that kind of guy, right? You know what I mean? That's why he's entertaining her. I was just really confused. But then in his confessionals, he would be like, yeah, I don't know if it's going to work with Courtney. But then in person, he seemed, he didn't even seem into it, if I'm going to be honest. He just seemed sort of like, he was just there, you know? I don't know how to explain it. He wasn't engaging in it he wasn't necessarily repelling from it and he didn't necessarily really seem interested <laughs> I don't know it's like a weird combination of the three so uh, Cornelius I don't know he's a mystery to me really and truly but you could tell like no like it was just not gonna work they're two different I know they say opposites attract but it's like yeah, maybe the reason why he was drawn to Courtney, like Courtney and Camille are similar in the sense that they are very assertive, right? They're very assertive. They're very, very like, this is what I want. And they do, a, they did the pursuing. <laughs> Let's just be real, right? They really came after Camellius, right? So it's like the only connection that he made is the women that kind of chose him and like latched on to him aggressively. You know what I mean? So that's kind of weird. <laughs> but, you know, yeah. But it is what it is, I think. You know. <laughs> they weren't going to work anyway, so whatever. Move it on. <laughs> Who is next? Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Let me take a sip of water before I get into the next part. <laughs> Sorry, that was like a gulp. <sighs> okay. Corey. <laughs> So, Corey's two love interests was Mumin and Courtney, right? And you guys know Corey. He was basically going around to everybody, copy and, and pasting, right? Telling everybody, you're my number one. I want you to meet my parents, da-da-da-da-da, right? And when Courtney, not Courtney, when, well, Courtney too, right? When Mumin confronted him about it he took no accountability right because basically he's so stupid like, sorry <laughs> I didn't say that you know I didn't say what you think I was about to say right but Corey is like when he left love notes at a the pool party right like if you're on the show and you're dating multiple women, why would you like leave love notes around a party which they're all going to be in to one of the women? Like, why would you set yourself up that way? Like, <laughs> like, why would you do that to yourself? Like, that's just common sense, right? And, the, and I don't know. I don't know with Corey. I'm not going to. <laughs> right so he set himself up and it's like did you do that on purpose are you that like that much of a asshole I'm sorry I'm sorry 
I'm not saying he's an asshole, but that is like very assholey behavior. Like you're not being considerate of any of the women. Well, mainly Momin. You're not being considered considerate of her and her feelings. Like you're being disrespectful to Momin in that moment. That's how I feel. Maybe you guys disagree, but I think that is disrespectful at the end of the day, right? Especially when I don't want to be like Momin gave him a chance, right? When all the other women were done with him, Momin, you know, was like, okay, fine. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> but low key, that is true. So for him to do Momin like that, like, why would you disrespect her like that? Like, so that just really, really turned me off of Corey. Now, Right, and that's the thing. When Momin confronted Corey about it, instead of owning up to it and being like, "Yeah, it was me. I did that," he deny like he denies it, or he's not. He's playing coy, like he's playing dumb. You know what I mean? Like everybody know it was it, it was you. So just admit it, right? You're not fooling anybody. You're not. This is not an investigation. Okay, the case was solved. It was. It's you. So just. Just admit it, right? But he doesn't, and it just makes everything gazillion times worse, right? For no, for no reason. And even with court, like when Courtney confronted him, it's the same nonsense. So I don't remember seeing this particular confessional. Maybe this was an added scene. I I don't know, right? But in his confessional, <sighs> let me tell you this. <laughs> if Corey is acting, listen, Tyler Perry, Tyler Perry, you need to call Corey. You need to call Corey and you need to put him in something. He's a good actor. I'll give him that. If he's an actor and the, he's acting, he's good. He's really, really good. Because there were some brief seconds, maybe like zero point five seconds where I'm like this could be real <laughs> like you know uh, maybe I can kind of buy where you're no no it was just a no but I like I tried to for a second I'm like you know what maybe in some warped world would I believe the excuses for your <laughs> I'm sorry let me calm down like his reasons for doing things were so weird like oh I just saw the way my father looked at my mother <gasps> and I I just wanted that so bad I wanted a woman to look at me the way my mother looked at my father and I could look at her the way my father looked at my mother and it's like an addiction you know, I'm just so romantic. <laughs> I just care too much. <laughs> it's like in a job interview when someone asks you like, so what are your weaknesses? And, it, you know, someone says, yeah, I care too much. Oh, well, you know, I work so hard. You know what I mean? I am such a hard worker. I'll keep on working and working and working. I'll never stop right? It's a real problem that I have, you know? I just always give it my all. I always give 110%. You know what I mean? Like, it's so annoying. <laughs> like, it's one of those. And that's what I felt. It's like, you're trying to kind of twist, right? Your poor behavior. I'm not going to say bad behavior. I'm going to say your poor behavior. You're trying to kind of twist it into this sort of like positive thing. And it's just, mm -mm, it's not aligning for me. It's not. Now, I could believe that the emotions are genuine, right? Because during the, you know, in the confessional, he breaks down and cries. And he also breaks down and cry cries in the reunion and you know what okay I, it's not like you want to see a man cry 
but I think it's good to see examples of like men expressing their emotions. You know what I mean? So I don't want to kind of have that thing where it's like, I, you know, you don't want to play into the pre-existing cultural kind of climate where like, you know, if a man starts to cry or whatever, they're sort of made fun of, you know what I mean? So like, I, I don't want to like, not think his expressions of his emotions are inauthentic, right? So I do want to give him the benefit of the doubt. And I, there is a part of me that feels like, <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't say it with my chest, okay? I gotta say, there's a part of me that does feel like those emotions are genuine. However, I don't think he, I don't think his thoughts and his reasonings behind those emotions are actually aligned with where his emotions and feelings are coming from. You know what I mean? It's like he's feeling it. It's like you're feeling angry, but you say, I feel happy, right? The reason I, you know, punched you in your face was because I was so happy, right? When truly you're angry. But like, it's not even that you're lying. It's just that you're not consciously aware why you're feeling what you're feeling, why you're doing what you're doing. But you, but I feel like he's at the place where he's maybe recognizing I'm doing these things, right? Which in his mind, he has positive, I guess, reasons or explanations as to why he's doing them. But his real world results are not... <laughs> positive right like he's pissing off people right people are kind of not having the best impression of him and he's starting to kind of see that because yeah when you're on a reality television it's not just the people that you're interacting with interacting with you it's like everybody watching the show sorry <laughs> everybody's formulating their opinion of who you are. So you're getting a lot of feedback. And you know, you can kind of ignore one person saying something. Maybe you can kind of ignore two. But it's like if everybody is saying the same thing, if everybody is reacting to you the same way, I don't necessarily mean you got to change who you are and you got to become the person that everybody likes. I'm not saying that because that's not possible. But I feel like you have to like take a moment and reflect and be like, hmm, is there some truth to what people are saying? And kind of like take a look within yourself. So maybe that's just where Corey is at. And we've all been there. I mean, not literally. <laughs> you know, I have not been on reality television and I wouldn't want to be. <laughs> But, like, I, I get it, you know, nobody is perfect. Or he could just be acting. <laughs> he could just be acting, I don't know. Like, he could, he could just be acting, he could just be an asshole, like, he knows what he's, he's acting, but he's playing, he, he, of course he has to come off as authentic, right? And I guess in his mind, being authentic is, like, never admitting <laughs> what you're doing, so it's like you're always gonna play dumb because you're playing a role, I don't know. It could go either way. Um, Camille seems to like Corey and Sabrina's like, I talk to him every day. I didn't get why people liked him, <laughs> right? And the way she was like, <laughs> let me take another sip of water. Sorry. The way Sabrina was like, Corey doesn't think like the rest of us. <laughs> Corey doesn't think like he really doesn't think like the rest of us okay Corey doesn't think like the rest of us okay like that it's like she sounds very concerned <laughs> right because there's a way like Corey doesn't think like the rest of us like you know there's a way to say that where 
that can kind of sound like a compliment. And then there's like a concerned, like some things, like he really thinks that what he's doing is, you know, like, <sighs> why? He did an interview with Little Black Book, but I don't know, like, I watched a little bit of it, but just, I wasn't interested after a while. You know what I mean? Like, I just wasn't, I didn't feel like I was really learning anything from Corey. At that, like, I don't know. So, yeah. Um, what I did like, Momin and Courtney. I really like that they, after his, because it's very easy when someone starts crying and they're, like, breaking down. It's very easy for you to be like, it's okay, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, they could have just been easy on him and brushed it off. But they were really like, yeah, I, no, I still you know, what you did wasn't cool. I'm not really buying all of this, right? I'm not. And I agree with them. <laughs> I, I don't blame them. It's like, I, like okay, I, you can cry and you can give, like, like I said, the emotion, the emotion, sure, is there, but your reasoning for it is not, no, no. Like I said, it, you can't, punch somebody in the face and say I punched you in the face because I was so happy I punched you in the face because you know you said you wanted to get a nose job right but you weren't getting the nose job <laughs> you know he kept going back and forth so I decided to punch you in the face so that you would be forced to get a nose job because that's what you wanted right <laughs> like <laughs> It's like that person that will just do something terrible to you and they will come up with the perfect excuse as to why they did it that makes them look like the bad guy. I mean, the good guy. And, like, they're doing you a big favor, right? And, like, Corey, Corey is very much giving me that. I'm sorry, he is. Why is he doing that? You know, I don't know. You know, I, I don't really remember his interview with Kojo. <laughs> I, I watched part of it, but, like, I don't remember much about his upbringing or whatever. So, who cares? Let's move on. I've talked long enough. Long enough. So, we get to Tisia's little moment, right? Um, Tisia had connections with um, Phil and Corey, right? Yeah. And Walter, actually. I don't... Did she have connections with Walter? I don't know. But Walter was there on the stage. I don't know. But they kind of have people grouped together. Rand like, they'll have, like, the main people. And then they'll just throw in some random cast members that have really nothing to do with <laughs> that storyline. But whatever. But I think she... Yeah, who cares, right? I think her main connection was Phil and Corey. And, of course, we know it didn't work out. I don't know. She does come off like she she comes off really serious. I don't know. Right. Like and some people, they like that. That's some people, whatever. They're drawn to that. But from what like if you didn't know her. Right. And you were getting to know her. I can totally understand why she could she could come off as intimidating. You know what I mean? Just because it feels like she's taking the process very seriously. You know what I mean? And obviously, it's going to be a little bit easier to do to deal with someone who is a little... Like, you're already nervous, right? I can imagine going into this situation. You're already uncomfortable. There, can, there are cameras everywhere. They're filming you. So if you have someone that's kind of straight face and they're kind of like... I wouldn't say she's like tough or anything, but she's not very playful, I guess, maybe not right away. That can be hard to interact with versus someone who is maybe more flirty and more playful. It's like it, they maybe kind of put you at ease. But that doesn't necessarily mean that they're the best match for you. It's just more so that they're easy to talk to right away, right? Because maybe, yeah, when you get to know Tasia, like... She's a, like, I definitely think, I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't really know her, right? But I, 
I'm not saying she's a bad person or anything. Like, all of the guys really seem to like her. It's just that maybe she's just one of those people that first impressions of her, she's kind of hard to get to know. But as she, as you get to know her and whatever, whatever, she's cool. And unfortunately, with a show like this, you know, we only get like ten episodes to really. And I think they film with eight weeks, so it's just you only have this limited time period to get to know everybody, right? So if you're not like woohoo, not like woohoo, look at me, but if you're not really like, if you don't have the personality that's like really putting yourself out there, you could get pushed to a push to the side on the show, right? Which, to be honest. Is a blessing. I'm gonna be real because, you know, it, it, listen, she's very lucky that things didn't work with Corey, right? Like, you know, whatever. She didn't miss out on Corey, right? Phil, I mean, well, Phil does seem like a nice guy, but I do think he's better suited with Sydney, right? So, and they ended up together. So it's like, whatever. Your person wasn't there. It's not. Like you'll find somebody that is for you, you know what I mean. So she didn't lose out on anything, right? But she is upset, right? Because <sighs> Corey's a mess, <laughs> right? Because Corey, it's like when we the the scene before with Mumin and Courtney, right? I think she felt some kind of way that she wasn't on the stage too. Like low key, like that's what I got. That's the impression that I got from her, because she was like, "Y'all forgot there was a third party member, right?" You know, because she didn't say, "Oh, well, Corey forgot about me." She was like, "Y'all forgot, right?" So that y'all, I think, is two producers. I don't know. Maybe I'm reading too much into it, right? Because I guess watching back the show. It's not like yeah we get them no because the scene that they showed between Tasia and Corey was like an unseen footage right I think maybe maybe we got to see one date of them right but it seems like they had more of a connection than what we saw on the show right and if you do watch Kojo's interviews you know that. There, of course, there's a lot of things we don't see, and they do meet up when they're not filming. They're not supposed to do that, but like at the end of the day, you can't control them. I don't know if they have they have contracts to say, or they sign something like you cannot meet the cast members. I don't think it's that serious, but they don't encourage that, right? And with the dates, the producers really have a heavy hand on who dates who, right? Like. You kind of have to go to them and say who you like. You can't just organically say, "Oh, I'm gonna ask this person out," and they just film you, right? You have to kind of have it orchestrated by them, and they may be like, "Well, no, there. We rather have you date this person," you know, or they like obviously not so direct, but you know they can kind of shift and manipulate you into like a certain direction. You know what I mean? So. Yeah, we didn't see Tasia and Corey in that play out, right? But to be honest, none of them really lasted long on the show, anyways. So we'll move. It will accept Moomin, right? Um. So yeah, I think she felt some kind of way, but it, it's like I don't know. I I wouldn't be mad over that. I'd be like, oh my gosh, thank God they didn't show me with Corey. Like, <laughs> like whoa, they saved me the embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> Glad they didn't make me look like the fool. Like I don't know. I wouldn't be mad over that. You know what I mean? I'd be like, cool. <laughs> I okay. I'm being mean to Corey. Let me stop. Right. I I don't know the poor man. So, Woo. So now it's time for Zaria, Aisha, and Dante. Is it Dante or Danta? I feel like it's Danta, but I'm just gonna say Dante. So. <laughs> It's time for their little moment, okay? So, yeah, we learned that Zadia and Naeem are together. Da 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 da. They they look good. I don't know. Sure, whatever, right? 
So they're showing the scene where Zadia kind of got into Dante's face, right? Because she was just, she was mad at him, according to him. She was mad at him because she thought he chose Aisha. And I'm like, and? <laughs> like, so what if you did? You know what I mean? Okay, yeah, sure. What if you chose Aisha? Why? I'm not saying you shouldn't be upset, but it's like, why are you that mad to the point where you are? I'm not going to say you're physically insulted, um, assaulting him. I'm not going to go that far, but you're, you're definitely emotionally abusing him at this point, right? Because you're towering over him. You're trying to intimidate him. I don't know. Like that is definitely a red flag, right? It's like, so what if you picked Aisha? You're on a show called Ready to Love. And even in real life, like if you are not in a monogamous relationship, even if you are in a monogamous relationship, you shouldn't try to physically intimidate your partner, right? But like if you're dating somebody and you guys are not exclusive and they're like, yeah, I think I'm feeling somebody else. Like, of course it's going to hurt. But at the end of the day, that's their truth, right? Like, that's how they feel. So, like, what do you want them to do? You want them to, A, either ghost you, which you're not going to like that, or, two, you want them to lie to you, which you're not going to like that. So the third option is for him to be honest. But, of course, you're not going to like that. So I don't know. Like, you're just going to have to... It's better that he's honest with you so you know what it is, right? And anyways, his honesty has nothing to do with you because that's his truth. If that's what he chooses, that's what he chooses. And if you go on a show like this, especially, you have to be mature enough to handle that, right? Like, like I said, in some alternative reality, right? If I were to be on the show, I would go on the show accepting that I may get rejected, Ouch, but that's a great possibility being on this show and I have to yeah, I'm gonna be sad, but I have to be okay with that. I'm I, I if I feel like I'm with the if you're the type of person that you're gonna be triggered to that point where you're getting into somebody's face, this is probably not the show for you. So Maybe I was trying to give Zadia, a, you know, the benefit of the doubt when I saw that. I'm not going to, I mean, it was still inappropriate, but I was kind of like, well, maybe he did something really, really, really bad. You know, maybe he just, maybe he called her a bit or he did something like, you know, like, and then I watched the scene and it's like, no. And then you're like, oh, well, you know, you never know with these shows, wait, you know, wait till the reunion, something may come out. And then the reunion comes and it's just like, oh, she thought that I chose Aisha. That's why she got into my, got, got in my face and was acting all rah, rah. But we talked about it and we're totally fine, which is fine. They can be totally fine. But the way, and even when like her addressing it, she just came off very defensive. She's like, will I apologize? Will I apologize to him? Well, we talked about it. Well, we and it's like, okay, that's cool that y'all apologized and talked about it and did whatever. But you do realize you're filming a reality show, okay? And we, the audience, are seeing a scene of you getting into a man's face, pointing your finger at him and da-da-da-da. Like, I'm not saying you owe the audience an apology, but you kind of owe us, like, you're not going to try to explain why you did that. You're not going to seem remorseful at all about it, right? It's like, it would be, I would have loved for her to maybe explain why she did that, right? Or what was going through her mind. Her, her kind of response is, well, yeah, it was wrong. Yeah, I shouldn't have done that. And I, and I talked to Dante. It's not even like I apologized to Dante. I talked to Dante. Maybe she did say I apologized to Dante. She did. She did, right? But it's like, okay, cool. But like, why did you do that? You know what I mean? Like an apology is great and everything. But wh why? You know, okay, it was bad. But like, why did you, you know, is this a normal thing that you do? Like, what, what happened? <laughs> but of course she doesn't. 
you know, whatever. If she doesn't want to get into it, then it is what it is. You know, whatever. We can't force her to give us an explanation. But that's totally not okay. And that's what the excuse or the reasoning that Dante gave is like, that's not acceptable. Like, that's not an acceptable reason to do what she did. So there's a question mark there. Moving on. Um... Do, 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 do. Aisha and Dante. Now, <laughs> at the end of the season, they were the unlikely couple, right? Because they kind of got together like more than halfway through the season. You know what I mean? And at first, I was like, mm, you know, I'm not too sure about this. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't too crazy about Dante because, you know, he does have three baby mothers, okay? (laughs) Right? Or let me word it this way. He has children with three different women. Okay, there. (laughs) He has women. He has women. He has children with three different women. I think he has four children, or am I wrong, or he has three, right? Three, four, same thing, right? (laughs) And then with three different women and whatever, whatever, I'm not going to judge too harshly. (laughs) It's his life. He's way over there. I'm way over here, whatever. You know what I mean? But... I like Aisha, I liked her, and it's like, you know, you don't want to see somebody get hurt, right? And then when you see somebody that has children with three different people, it's kind of a red flaggy-ish. It's something, and it's like, oh, I don't want her to get hurt. I'm gonna be honest, that's what I thought. I'm sorry, that's what I thought. But as the season progressed, and I saw more of them, I'm like, you know what? This makes sense, right? Because, yes, to a lot of people, a guy that has, (laughs) I'll say it again, (laughs) three children with three different women, or maybe four children with three different women, right? That's a red flag to a lot of people, or not necessarily a red flag. A lot of people would be uncomfortable with that, okay? A lot of people would be like, uh, you know, like, hmm, right? But I felt like Aisha was actually maybe a good match for him because she's been married. She has children of her own. Um, She does have trouble carrying. And she doesn't really seem too eager to have another child, right? Like, I could see her doing it if she is compelled to down the road. But she was very much so like, yeah, I lived a married life, you know, I raised my children, my children are getting older, and now I just want to live my life, now I just, and you know, well, let me add in, I got a divorce, the divorce part is important, (laughs) part of her story, right, she got a divorce and everything, and she's like, yeah, I want to live my life, I want to be out on the beach, and da 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 right, so, it made sense with Dante, right? A lot of people would be like, mm, no to Dante. But Aisha and Dante made sense because it seemed like, okay, I mean, I don't know. Dante never spoke on it, but I'm assuming, not that he, to be honest, I'm assuming he doesn't want any more children, you know what I mean, by another woman, at least, because I'm like, that's not going to look too, too great, you know, it's like, now you have six children by four different women. I don't know if you want to go there, right? So maybe I'm just assuming that he's not in a rush to have any more children, right? And she doesn't seem in a rush to have any more children herself. Plus, they both seem fun and flirty and very, you know, sensual. And I just thought, like, yeah, they're a good match. They are. And that was one of the couples where it's like, okay, I'm rooting for you. I am, like, the unlikely pairing, like, okay, but everybody else is, well, to be fair, I do like Shiloh and Phil as well, so I'm like, okay, cool, whatever, (laughs) we get to the reunion, (laughs) and now I'm not too sure about it, I'm not too sure, because it's not so much, I mean, I'm not surprised by Don, 
by by ugh. I'm not surprised by Dante. Like Dante is giving what I thought he would give. You know what I mean? So I'm not really like, oh, he really switched up or he shocked me in some way. You know what I mean? I feel like, yeah, he's kind of been consistent with the same energy. The one that kind of shocked me, to be honest with you, is Aisha. Like, I don't know. It's like during the season, she kind of seemed more laid back. You know what I mean? Like she wanted to live her best life. You know, like she didn't really seem like she was in a rush to get married or settle down again. You know what I mean? So I'm like, okay, I see out of everybody, Dante is a good pairing from her, for her. But listening to her talk, it seems like, I don't know, one of those classic situations where she seems more into him than he's into her. I'm not saying he doesn't like her, but she's giving me very much like, if he would propose, if like if Dante were to propose to her next month, she would say yes. Like that's the type of vibe she's giving me, right? And I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but it's very clear that Dante, Dante's just not there. You know what I mean? And it's one of the things when the host act like she's so cringy when she asked. <laughs> I hate when she asks this question. She even asked the question to Phil and Shiloh where she's like, so is an engagement in the works? Are you going to get married soon? When is your baby coming? It's like, lady, relax. Okay, like they've just, what? They've been filming for eight weeks, right? So they've just known each other for a little over, well, for two months essentially, right? Maybe three, four months at that point. It's like, why are you rushing them to get married? Why are you bringing up... Are you gonna get engaged even though you know this person for a week? Like, it's too much. <laughs> and I know it's fair. She's allowed to ask. I don't know. I just think it's a stupid question to ask people who have been barely dating. When are you gonna get engaged? Or is, is there marriage in the works, right? A part of me feels like that's cringy, Right? And it's like, you don't really know the person to really say all that. But a part of me like, and tell me what you guys think if you're still listening, because this is a long ass review. <laughs> but do you, a part of me is like, yeah, I mean, if you want to get married, it's important to date somebody, right? Or be courting somebody or whatever that also has the same intentions, right? And the same sort of value or goal to get married, right? Because it's like, if you, it seems like Aisha wants to, you know, I'm not saying she necessarily wants to get married next month, but Aisha does seem like she wants to get married again, right? She's very comfortable talking about marriage. She is very comfortable dropping the L word, which is love. You know, I don't know if she was like, he loves me. Or he loves it here and he loves me, right? And it was that awkward moment where it's like, he's like, she's all right. You know what I mean? And obviously he's like, it was a joking, she's all right, right? But it was more so of, you could tell, and maybe I'm reading too much into it, but like you could tell he felt like this woman is not expecting me to tell her that I love her right now. Like, oh, that's so awkward. Why are you even putting me in this position, right? Because I do think he likes her. He doesn't want to hurt her feelings or every, or anything. But, like, he doesn't love her. at the <laughs> Right? But he can say, yeah, I don't love you right now because I don't really know you. So you're putting me in a weird position by saying that. And I don't think she meant it like that. I think sometimes words just kind of slip out and, you know, and you just say them and it's like, oops. <laughs> but I think they played it off really well. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I, I it, Like... When the host act like, asked, like, okay, is marriage in the future? He was like, well, the sky is the limit. <laughs> the sky is the limit. And I, I don't know. I'm not quite sure what that means, to be honest. Like, 
is the sky the limit marriage? I'm not too sure. <laughs> right? It's like, it, you, if you want, you could interpret it as, yeah, that it does mean marriage, but the sky's the limit just mean, could just mean, like, anything. You know what I mean? It could just be like, well, you know, if she shows me the things, I can't remember the exact wording, but it was something of the nature like, well, you know, if we'll just take it day by day, and if, you know, she shows me that da 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 then sure, right? I felt like he kind of put it all on her to show him, and I don't know. It doesn't, which is okay, I understand that logic, but in general, I don't know if he wants to get married. Maybe he does, right? But I didn't even really get that impression that he wanted to get married. I don't know. That's the impression that I, I got from the show. And to be fair, you know, maybe I'm just like projecting something onto him based on certain <laughs> things about him, right? Without really knowing him as a full person and I mean we only get to see snippets on the show but that's kind of this I don't know how seriously I took him and the reason why I thought Aisha was a great match because I thought she wasn't in a rush I thought she was just taking it easy but now I see her and she's not taking it easy so I don't know and even when she was like it's like he put it all on her but then she also put it all on him right like, oh, I just make sure when he's ready, you know, when he's okay, when he feels comfortable, you know, I back away and I say, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. That's <laughs> like, um, you know, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, Aisha. I don't know. I, I don't, Dante, I don't know. But, uh, you know, they're cute together. I definitely think they have that physical chemistry. You know, you know what? I feel like they'll be one of those people that even if they don't end up together, I think they would be good friends, you know? There is chemistry between them. So, you know, hopefully I'm wrong. You know, I pray that I'm wrong and that's their, you know, they're each other's soulmate and they're happy and whatever, whatever. I really hope I'm wrong, but... <clears throat> okay, moving on. So finally, you know, it's crazy to me. They show the trailer for the next season, right? And apparently the next season is, what, airing next week? Are you kidding me? Like, have they heard of a season break? Like, what? Like, how long was this season? I don't know if it's like 14 episodes and da-da-da-da. Now you're like giving us another one. It's too much. We need a break. Okay, I'm kind of lying. I'm kind I you know, I'm kind of here for it. I am, but like I feel like you need some time to reflect. I feel like <laughs> I keep on saying I feel like, but I feel like and just by watching the live panel shows um and everything on uh Little Black Book 91, I think people are kind of just sort of over the structure of the show right or over the model of the show and they're not over the show I think people definitely like the show but the show needs to make some they need to make some changes right and rushing to the next season without really getting the feedback from the audience I don't know if that's the best move because what that's going to lead to, we're going to get, I like, I hope we don't get another season of kind of like the same sort of problems and issues because then that's just going to make us more like, oh, right. And I feel like that may hurt the show. You know what I mean? But on the other hand, I guess the perspective is like the show's a hit. People are really responding to it. So let's just milk this thing. You know, yeah, it's not going to last forever, but let's just milk it and get as much as we can out of it. And then when it dries up, it dries up. That's also <laughs> a perspective. But, you know, we'll, we don't know. So we're just going to have to wait. Um, yeah, I don't know. Something needs to change with the show. I think the focus 
needs to kind of shift away from the whole survivor elimination, I nominate X, Y, and Z sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like, something, you know, I'm not a producer, okay? So I'm not going to give you, <laughs> I'm not going to give you the idea or tell you what it is, but something needs to be switched up uh, just a bit, just a bit, because... Yeah, the show is messy. We're not gonna like expect it to be something that it's not. Like it was shady from its in- inception, right? So it's like, yeah, don't entirely disrupt the DNA of the show. We have to have a bit of drama, but you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know because it's like the show is really predicated on this whole elimination thing. So if you kind of mess with that and take that away, then the show transforms into something entirely different, right? And that is a risk, but I don't know. Like, maybe, maybe, um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But I'm here for the next season. I'll watch it. You know, maybe I'll maybe I'll review it and not just review two episodes out of the season. But if I do review it, I'm probably going to review kind of near the end where there's a lot less people. <laughs> okay, I know this was a long, 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 long review. <laughs> and I'm tired. <laughs> right? Overall, this season was... It was all right. It was all right. It wasn't it was entertaining. Let me be positive. It was entertaining. It was it was um at the end of the day, I do feel like if any couple is going to last, it's going to be I don't know. I'm going to fill in Shiloh really at the end of the day. So, I mean, that's the average, right? At like average they have maybe two final couples that make it to the reunion. And then one couple that breaks up, and then one couple that maybe lasts a couple of months, and then they break up. So, you know, it's it's giving the usual. So I'm not mad. I'm not mad. <laughs> you know, good job, Oprah. <laughs> um, is there anything else? No, no, that's everything. So see you guys.